Stereoisomerism. First, let's do a little review. Isomers in general are molecules that have the same chemical formula, but they're different somehow. Constitutional isomers, for example, have different connectivity. Both of these molecules have the chemical formula C4H10, whereas this one is butane. The one on the right is 2-methylpropane. So, different connectivity for constitutional isomers. Stereoisomers, on the other hand, have the same connectivity and the same chemical formula, but they look different. This molecule shown here, for instance, is trans-2-butene because one of the hydrogens is pointing up and the other one is pointing down. This is the stereoisomer of cis-2-butene. So when we draw cis-2-butene, that's what we have. And now both of the hydrogens are pointing in the same direction. That's what makes it cis. Right, so cis-trans is one variety of stereoisomers. Another variety of stereoisomers is molecules that contain chirality centers. For the purposes of this class, we'll limit ourselves to the discussion of chiral carbons. A chiral carbon has four different groups attached to it. So we'll say it's got group A, group B, group C, and group D. But seeing the carbon drawn this way, it's hard to see how it's chiral. In fact, what you've got to do is draw it three-dimensionally. So, there's actually two ways you could draw this carbon. We could draw it with um, or with that group A pointing straight up, B coming straight down and to the right, group C coming down and to the left and toward us, and group D coming down and to the left and away from us, or we could draw the mirror image. Now, what makes this a chirality center is that this chiral carbon is not superimposable on its mirror image. Right, so here's the original that I drew and here's the mirror image of what I drew. And right now we've got the A and the C are superimposable. So if I rotate the molecule 180 degrees to get the A, C, and B superimposable, let's see what happens. So what I've done is I've rotated this molecule 180 degrees around the vertical axis, which is also the bond axis between the carbon atom and group A. And this is what I get. Now, it looks similar to our original, right? Because A is going straight up, A is going straight up, and B is going down into the right, and B is going down into the right. Now, the problem is C and D don't overlap. In the mirror image, C is going away from us, and D is coming toward us. And in the original, D is going away from us and C is coming toward us. So just to put the two closer, here's my original, here's my mirror image. The carbon, group A and group B, all overlap nicely, but group C and group C do not. Now, if we had only three different groups, like if we had two group A's, and a B and a C, for instance, then those would always overlap with their mirror image and it's not chiral. So it's a carbon having four different groups that makes it chiral. What about bond line structures? Are there four different groups? In other words, is this a chirality center? Well, let's find out. So here's a partially condensed structure for the molecule on the left. Does it have four different groups? Well, your carbon is bonded to a methyl group, an ethyl group, a hydroxyl group, 
and a hydrogen. That's the implied hydrogen that we don't show. So there are four different groups. And these two molecules are not superimposable because look, the methyl group is going down into the left. That's superimposable. The ethyl group is down into the right. That's superimposable. However, the hydroxyl group on the molecule on the left is coming up and towards us, and on the molecule to the right, it's going up and away from us. Moreover, in the molecule on the left, the hydrogen's going up and away from us, whereas it's going up and towards us on the molecule on the right. Now, if we were to stick a spatula under this molecule and flip it over 180 degrees, then we'd have the hydroxyl and the hydrogens lining up, but our methyl would now line up with our ethyl and vice versa. So now I take my spatula and I stick it underneath this molecule and I flip it over 180 degrees, and look, now my hydroxyl lines up and my hydrogen lines up but oh darn the methyl is now lining up with the ethyl and the ethyl is now lining up with the methyl hence these two molecules are chiral and because they are non-superimposable mirror images of each other we say they are a pair of enantiomers so enantiomers are stereoisomers that are non-superimposable mirror images. The other kind of stereoisomer is a diastereomer, which is non-superimposable and not a mirror image, despite having the same chemical formula and the same connectivity. So, enantiomers are molecules that have one or more chirality centers, where all the chirality centers are reversed from one molecule to the next, Right, so these two isomers of 2-butanol are enantiomers. Diastereomers are non-superimposable and not mirror images, and that uh, this includes cis-trans stereoisomers. 